Look at this editing timeline for a short film. What do you notice? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's the blue craziness, which is the video, which looks pretty calm, actually, compared to the green craziness, which is the audio. This just goes to show how detailed and meticulous audio editing is compared to video editing. Sound effects artists spend weeks recording and layering in all of the sound for just minutes of footage. The process of layering in and balancing out all of these little sound effects is called mixing. Last week, we compared visual effects to a ham sandwich. So this week, audio will be a fruit smoothie. We'll start with our fruit, or foley. Foley is what we think of as the bulk of our sound effects. This is footsteps, clothes rustling, gunshots, and everything in between. Foley artists spend hours in studios crafting sound effects. A Foley studio is a large room filled with objects to make these sound effects and surfaces like concrete and sand. Some sound effects don't actually come from where you think they would. The laser beams in Star Wars were made using a slinky and horses running is created using a coconut. So you can see here that there really is no downright recipe to Foley. It's really just a process of experimenting and thinking out of the box until you get the right thing for your project. But we can't just blend up a bunch of fruit. That's not a smoothie, it's a fruity sludge. Ambience is the base of our smoothie. We can use milk or juice, the loud bustling of a city in the background, or just some subtle room tone. Either way, we never hear true silence in real life, so ambience is necessary for your sound mix. It's important that you pick the right sound for your scene. This distant construction might not work, but this subtle background noise of a suburban backyard will do. In addition to tying your scene together, ambience can also be used to cover up your mistakes. Enough orange juice and we won't be able to taste that spinach. You can hear where our foley abruptly begins and ends, but not with the ambience on. Finally, put in the straw, and we're done. But we can't just ignore the straw, it's important that you pick the right one. In the same sense, the right music sets the mood of your scene, and keeps the right pacing. So, will you choose to use a tall straw, a short straw, a thick straw, a thin straw, a straw that's so short it's pretty much useless, this thing, or just no straw at all?